Melbourne Good News Week. And the big news? Jean-Philippe Wispelaire, a bodybuilder with a fondness for steroids and yoghurt, has thrown Australia's security links with the US into chaos after being arrested on spying charges. Wispelaire allegedly set up a State Secrets R Us webpage where you could type in your credit card details and download naked pictures of Madeleine Albright pointing to her hidden birthmark. <laughs> Jean-Philippe offered to sell the American military secrets for $180,000. And for just one dollar more, he was going to throw in Australia's military secrets. <laughs> it's rumoured he also sold classified information to Channel 7 about Nine's plan for a million dollar quiz game. <laughs> According to his confession, Wispelaire wanted the money for breast reduction surgery. <laughs> Apparently he was sick of having the code name Double D7. <laughs> Not surprisingly, the Australian Defence Intelligence Organisation is dumbfounded. Who'd have thought a bodybuilding junkie who chugged steroids dipped in yoghurt would be so unstable? <laughs> anyway, Jean-Philippe could now face the death penalty. Isn't it nice to see Australians making it big overseas? <laughs> In media news, James Packer has warned that Australian programming will be slashed if the government grants a fourth commercial TV licence. But how could a new network ever hope to compete with the great shows on 7 and 9 like Australia's most unexpected workplace redundancies? <laughs> but the government doesn't think it's necessary to put a new TV station on the market. They've already got a renovator's dream for rent over at the ABC. <laughs> Turning to news in brief, Federal Police and Customs are confident they've cracked the illegal immigrant smuggling racket with the capture of two more boatloads. But we shouldn't get too cocky. Many of these people are desperate. Here's a tip for Customs. If you spot 20 million lone Chinese yachtsmen heading south, be very, very careful. Uh, in the Balkans, NATO has adjusted its war aims, this time by bombing the Swedish embassy. <laughs> That's more like it. Bomb the Chinese embassy and you could get World War III. But how are the Swedes going to retaliate? <laughs> Put more Volvo drivers on the road? <laughs> In other Balkan news, the NATO members who absolutely refuse to send ground troops into Yugoslavia are Italy and Germany. And they should know. Been there, done that. <laughs> uh, the Germans have, however, offered to maintain NATO's reputation for accuracy by invading Poland. <laughs> Under the Three Strikes mandatory sentencing policy in the Northern Territory, a homeless man has been jailed for 12 months for stealing a pink towel off a clothesline. <laughs> when police cornered him, the man ran around in circles, waving the towel over his head. When the cops asked him why, he said he was expecting his girlfriend to pick him up in a helicopter. <laughs> the owners of the towel say, you never think it'll happen to you, but when it does, well, you can't help but blame yourself. <laughs> And it just keeps going through your head over and over again. Please, God, don't let him tumble dry. <laughs> but this sort of thing happens all the time. I mean, how many times have you been in a Chinese restaurant, someone comes up and offers you a hot towel? <laughs> Employment Services Minister Tony Abbott has branded unemployed people who refuse to do menial work job snobs. <laughs> After 13 years of state education, you'd think 18-year-olds would be champing at the bit to get out there and clean a few toilets. <laughs> Tony Abbott says unemployment is like a cancer and the government intends to deal with it accordingly by hoping it falls into remission and goes away by itself. <laughs> and that's the good news. Thank you, good evening. Tonight, as the pressure builds, the never say die, Julie McCrossan, one of Australia's best young comedians, the funniest man on one and a half legs, Adam Hills, and the heavenly Joanna Griggs! <laughs> and they're standing up to be counted alongside the fearless leader, Mikey Robbins. She's a model, she's an author, she's the most beautiful girl on that team. She is Tara Morrison. <laughs> 
and a shy young man who's going to need a lot of coaxing to come out of his shell, H.G. Nelson! Can I just alert you to something you may not be aware of, which could change the whole show tonight? Right. All the three women on this program are liberals, mm. and even more spooky than that, Tara and I have so much in common in so many physical ways. Yeah. <laughs> are also... We were born on exactly the same day. And which day is that? 2nd of October. The 2nd of October. That's she right. is a model. <laughs> <laughs> and you too can look like this on the 2nd of October. Or you can be gorgeous like Julie. <laughs> exactly. Or like Groucho Marx, who's also born on the same day. And how much do I have in common with Groucho? We should have a party. We should. Now, of course, uh, all the men on the team are homosexual. <laughs> And so it goes. Julie, Adam, Joanna, what's the story here? Yes. Horse race. Right. Oh, no. Policemen <laughs> on the right. Policemen crushing people. Mm. National Union of Students. Student getting very angry about something. Angry. I'll stop the issue. More students. That's a nasty disease, oh. that VSU. Yeah. <laughs> it is, and it's spread by the Howard government. So <laughs> 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 We should declare a conflict of interest because I'm doing one of the slowest university degrees in history and therefore I'm not sure that I should answer this question. However, can I just say this is a very hot issue which we have uh, talked about on this program before. Do you want to kick it off? The student union costs that they have, um, which then subsidises all sorts of different things. Like and the government and is actually trying to make that requirement voluntary. Which could have a huge impact on what's available at universities in terms of food and services and so on. Because students it... giving money voluntarily has never been a successful venture in the past. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, just, I mean, just, just think about it. It's voluntary. Union fees, bag of pot. <laughs> <laughs> Union fees, bag of pot. A lot of uni students these days are working their way through, and they think front up at uni in suits looking unbelievably straight kind of with mobile phones. They're great when they protest. What do we want? Rechargeable batteries. When do we want it? <laughs> and, and despite that, at that demonstration that we saw the pictures from where the horses were sort of becoming a little bit intimate with their hooves with human beings, um, they had shots in a whole lot of the press of, of students who looked like sort of throwbacks from the late 60s. And I feel they must have been journalists' friends dressed up because most students don't look like that anymore. The students from the late 60s still going, that Vietnam <laughs> thing sucks, man. <laughs> they do have a right, I'm going to stop them there. Five points to start the show! <laughs> uh, before Mel Colston announced he wouldn't support it, students across the nation took to the streets this week to protest the government's proposed ban on compulsory student unionism. The Howard government says students shouldn't need a union to provide services for them. They should have rich parents like normal people. <laughs> the National Farmers Federation even offered to break the union by filling lecture theatres with imported non-union stupid people. <laughs> but things turned ugly when students tried to get into John Howard's office by smashing down the doors and attacking police just like real unionists. <laughs> if they wanted an audience with the Prime Minister, there are much easier ways to go about it. Like leaving a giant wooden Robert Menzies filled with hundreds of angry students outside his office. <laughs> Mikey, Tara, HG, what's this fracas all about? That bloke's ears. Our <laughs> <laughs> uh, solicitors with attitude. Uh, this is Frank Constitution. This is a... Uh, it's a Sydney story, a recent story, yeah. You guys obviously went to, to great lengths to use this education for good things, like getting out of parking tickets and... Uh, <laughs> and, and, and paying his tax. There's a, yes. there's a solicitor, uh, that, that chap there, who's part of a group called Solicitors with Attitude. <laughs> Yo, drive-bys in BMWs. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's saying because the Australian Constitution was never voted in for as a referendum, it's not legally valid, so as such, he doesn't have to pay taxes, parking fines, speeding fines. <laughs> Don't get overexcited, kiddies. Um, yeah, and he's, he's using that as his defence. Yes, how successful is he, Mikey? Is he winning? Well, uh, at this point in time, he, he turned up in court and he presented the, uh, the judge with a 150-page affidavit uh, ab about... Uh, Can you read this? It's really just stalling time, yeah, basically, yeah. I reckon. Actually, mind you, though, the, the judge got pretty shitty when he found out after page three, it's just Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> As someone who has a shocking history of parking fines, I, I have had literally hundreds of them at times, and I've been to the parking court. It's an incredibly low-key 
thing with a you know a very small itty bitty magistrate and the thought what of how big is he oh, <laughs> <laughs> but the thought of someone coming in with this major constitutional argument when normally it's just hundred dollars hundred fifty dollars <laughs> i mean it would just be a terrible legal disaster that's what amazes me julius you don't drive <laughs> What I'm seeing here is the percentage of the wedge, though. If you can get away with parking fines, I believe in the end he would be able to get away with murder. And I think that's what the Australian Constitution has to look at. It has to go back and have a look and see if murder's allowed. Because uh, we're living under a bloody illusion here that parking um, fines... You know, you start in a life of uh, crime, nice, sure, park it here, a loading zone. Yeah. Sooner or later, you know parking. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, you've got a knife out, you're sticking up people, then you're shooting people. <laughs> thing that's going to happen, you know? Hey, they're going to have a time they're born, you're going to end up with all sorts of bloody problems in society. Well, Look at Rugby League this week. Oh. Oh. They have it, ladies and gentlemen, five points! Uh, Sydney solicitor is fighting a $60 parking ticket on the grounds that the Constitution ceased to be effective in 1919, when Australia was recognised as an independent nation. Wayne Levick thinks we should have had a referendum after World War I to approve the Constitution. And he's right. If we'd done that, we might have reached agreement on it by now. <laughs> but Wayne isn't the only person to maintain that our Constitution is worthless. Indigenous leaders have been saying it for years. Oh, why don't you go live in Russia? <laughs> but don't get the wrong idea. We have had a Constitution since 1919. It's just no one's read it since then. Well, Paul, we're all waiting for the film to come out. <laughs> I can spot so, the floor in his argument, though. There was no parking fines in 1919. When was the first parking fine? I bet you it was a lot later than bloody 1919. Well, it wasn't as such a parking fine. Oh, no, fine, listen. Either. People in horses, they used to just put their little horse tied up. Some little mongrel at the beginning of a grey uniform used to come out and slap a ticket on that horse. <laughs> that is, that is, that is, that is, no, it's true, it's true. It's true. If the, if the law has been null and void, right, Levick's parking fine will be dropped. But he may be charged under, and this is what you're talking about, he may be charged under His Majesty's Horseless Carriage Act of 1898 because he didn't run in front of his car waving a red flag <laughs> or singing Rule Bloody Britannia before every journey. That's there. <laughs> anyway, so after one uh, defenceless round of Good News Week, the Macrossan team are on five points. The Robins team are on five points. <laughs> As we mopped up the blood, both teams were given three clues to a recent strange but true story. Macrossan, Hills and Griggs have a betting form. More horses. Uh, underwear. <laughs> and if you're very good, he might try it on later. <laughs> and this. Your nearest exit is here and here. Your life jacket is either under your seat or in the tray beside you. Oxygen will fall from here and enjoy your flight. <laughs> And Robins Moss and Nelson received a battery. Now, this is comedy. <laughs> a tooth. Excellent. This is an ideal moment to point out that you're Canadian, not American, because that looks like an American sized mouth to me. <laughs> Actually, how many teeth can you count? That's right. Can, can I just point out on a totally inane note that this battery plays jingle bells? <laughs> That's right. Christmas to me, kids. <laughs> hey, Dad, what are we getting for Christmas? Battery, shut up. <laughs> and comedy buttocks. Yeah. Oh. Uh, to start round two, a game called Don't Quote Me. Joanna, to what do these three fine men refer? Uh, it was tremendous from a bonding point of view. Oh. Seven million dollars worth of pliers aboard 20 hacks. Less dangerous than uh, a night at the bourbon and beef. Can't be referring to that fine breed of young men, upstanding citizens that they are, rugby league players. Because <laughs> um, I have nothing against them. Um, That's not what I've heard. <laughs> um, it's to do with Robbie Kearns, Melbourne Storm player who was up here. He's in the State of Origin team on, for a Wednesday's game. They went for a bonding camp because they love a bit of bonding and they decided to get them outdoors, out back into nature, back into other things apart from pubs and clubs. And Robbie Kearns fell off a horse on the bonding camp and, and injured his arm and is out. And they're now going to, Melbourne Storm's going to sue. Not Either that, Wayne Pierce, the thing. It's his shoulder, shoulder, collarbone, collarbone. collarbone. Mm. He hurt himself back. <laughs> <laughs> she does have it, ladies and gentlemen. Three points to start her up.
Unfortunately, the moment's lost, but it was the horse trigger that I feel most sorry for. He had never seen a rugby league player and obviously took fright like most members of the public. <laughs> he did the right thing, trying to get as far away from Kearns as he could, but the bloke kept pursuing him. The horse put up a great fight. <laughs> you've, got to get, you've got to get your mind around the concept that most of these players have never seen a horse in their lives, and most of them found it hard to imagine there was a thing called fire that they'd sit around and warm their hands on and touch the grass fellows. I mean, these skills that rugby league's players used to have in the past are no longer passed on to the succeeding generations. No, no, they would have been a lot happier at Selena's doing the helicopter. <laughs> A day of bonding ended in disarray for the New South Wales State of Origin team this week when Melbourne Storm player Robbie Kearns fell off a horse and broke his collarbone. Coach Wayne Pearce took his team bush so the players could shit where they like <laughs> and, and pass it off as standard camping procedure. <laughs> the players knew nothing about horse riding except what they'd seen in westerns. So when Robbie broke his collarbone, they didn't know whether to throw whiskey on it, push an arrowhead through it, or suck on it. So they did all three. <laughs> Mr. Nelson, three quotes for you. Yes, um. The critical issue for consumers is to know what the content of food is. It would be like buying a steak sandwich without the steak. Catholics <laughs> will be able to eat pies on Good Friday. Yes, yes. <laughs> Well, this is obviously, uh, obviously got to do with the content of meat in various, uh, in various foodstuffs. So it is uh, to do with the lack of, with, with, the, with things like steak sandwiches, pies. pies uh, grilled uh, chicken burgers. Grilled chicken burgers having none of those things in them. Mostly meat pies, I, I believe they're HG. Mainly meat pies. Mainly meat pies, yes. Look, it's a tremendous breakthrough. Uh, <laughs> for too long I felt that meat has held the meat pie back. <laughs> My battery plays jingle bells. <laughs> Call down. Uh, mm -hmm. HG has it right. Three points. <laughs> Later this month, the Australia New Zealand Food Authority will consider a proposal to scrap the 25% minimum meat content of meat pies. What? The other 75% of the pie is currently made up of pastry, beaks, and pet identity bracelets. <laughs> There's still conjecture within the industry as to whether process workers' fingers can be counted as meat. Well, see, see, Paul, that's the problem. Once they lose the fingers, they can't do the counting. <laughs> Questions are also being asked about the low percentage of shepherds in shepherd's pie. Why am I fat? They're going to take the fat out of meat pies and I'm going to be livid! I tell you what, I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going to have a one-man protest. I'm going to nude up. I'm going to get down here and come out of the wheel. No! I'm going to talk to myself about the work I'm uh, The good news is, pies will now be able to carry the reassuring disclaimer, no animals were injured in the making <laughs> of this meat pie. We sometimes call the next game Warren. Three headlines about the same subject, but their identity has been expensively concealed by the name. Warren! Adam, your headlines. Judge splits Warren bequest three ways. Eight million for Warren research. I'm 18 and I've got... <laughs> Warren, any thoughts? Eight million dollars for Warren research. Uh, it's a disease. <laughs> Someone has left a substantial... Okay. Judge splits <laughs> fat bequest three ways. The <laughs> fat research and pie content. And I'm 18 and I've got a fat. Is it some kind of disease because people are trying to stop that disease by research? We're researching it. Someone's 18. You don't normally get... It's Alzheimer's. Someone's 18 and they've got Alzheimer's. <laughs> and the judge has split it three ways because they've forgotten who it's supposed to go to. <laughs> It's, it's, it's cancer. Let's just see if the Hills boy is right. Ah! <laughs> Three points. Uh, yes, it is the big C. 
Three of Australia's largest cancer foundations have been in court recently after a Sydney man left over $3 million in his will to cancer research, but didn't specify exactly who should get it. It was a dirty court case. While their security guard was at lunch, the Skin Cancer Laboratory was attacked by lung cancer researchers who pillaged their Petri dishes, raised Bunsen burners to the ground, and ethnically cleansed lab rats. <laughs> Uh, but the cancer organisations felt right at home in the courtroom. They're used to being around people wearing wigs who think they're one step away from God. <laughs> Tara, your Warren is a bit of a tricky one tonight. It's a bit different. What a trip. Big Warren heads for Big Smoke. Post gone to Warren. Scholar spells three for using Warren. Oh, right. Oh, OK. What is this thing called Warren? Ah, yes, Warren, Warren. Well, this I'm, Warren really gets around. I, I would say that the school looks gone through for using Warren with those three kitties that were uh, busted for using, um, you know... Wacky tobacco. Wacky tobacco, Post. yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I, believe they're, I believe they're called university woodbines. Uh, I think it's fat. <laughs> big fat. The big fat heads for the big smoke. Post gone to fat. Well, everybody knows that Australia Post had the dick years ago. Oh. And the school expels three for using fat. Oh, I'm not touching that. that. <laughs> could, could Warren be pot? Or... Okay, let's yeah. just see what Warren is. Join Fox Cattle. Tara the Red. Amazing. Amazing. The, uh, you, you saw the people marching with the big joint yeah. or coming to the, the drum <laughs> summit. One of my favourite news reports was on, I think it was the ABC News years ago. It was a protest about uh, sewerage outlet being built in a town. And so they, so they constructed this giant pool. Uh, but when, but um, the, the holding it, marching it, it was raining, I swear. The new, newsreader went, there was heavy rain, but undeterred they marched on. <laughs> uh, it was the devil's weed in the uh, Justice and Customs Minister Amanda Vanstone has called in the cops after some joker sent her a big box of dope. <laughs> Sending marijuana through the post is a pretty lame way to try and incriminate the Justice Minister. But it's easier than trying to shove it up a bottom at the airport. <laughs> Vanstone wanted to hand the cannabis over to the police, but John Howard grabbed it instead. It's a useful bargaining tool in his deal with the Democrats. <laughs> in a related incident, someone mailed a large box of Chinese boat people to <laughs> Philip Ruddock. <laughs> Uh, the malignant Macrossans are now on 11 points and the remission Robins is 11 points! You can't get rid of us that easily! The remit authorised by the voice of a guy. Next game is the usual suspects, teams. We'll show you three people linked by a common thread. All you have to do is identify the final member of the lineup. Team Julie! Yep. Your suspects are. Nelson Mandela. Oh, as a young, sexy man. <laughs> not that he isn't a, now. You ask that woman, he's weird. He's an older, sexy man. 81, you know 82, and is still the, a is girl. Is that dance? <laughs> <laughs> the beauty about it is, that goes with every song. John F. Kennedy and Fidel Castro. Oh, yes. Who's the next in line? Each of those men has had a profound effect on their society and tried to make it progressive. No, no, uh, no, Julie, no. They've all been romantically linked with Kerry Ann Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking uh, so, radical social change, Nelson Mandela, JFK, Fidel Castro, Brian Harrodine. <laughs> JFK, Kennedy, um, probably best known apart from Marilyn Monroe for being assassinated. Mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela, there's been a tie with assassination with him which people were jailed for, for attempted assassination. Mm -hmm. Fidel Castro, <laughs> help me out. Well, the Americans no, are always yeah. trying to kill him. They're trying to kill him. They're trying to kill him. And I'm tipping that the last one is Slobodan Milosevic. Um, when there was a recent case uncovered with British intelligence, the MI5 or MI6, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, an, an attempted assassination plot was uncovered. The Brian Harrodin no, could think... still be assassination plot. It could be. Sorry, in a week or so I've got an idea. I uh -oh. think this is look. Uh, not even your question, but go for it. Don't 
Hold back, hey, Chief. Look, look, it's, they're all Babe Magnus, the three you can see there. There's, uh, Nelson can still pull them. JFK, of course. Everybody knows he was on the job 24 hours a day. <laughs> Mystery man there is Fidel Castro, but he's at it. Let me tell you, he's, he's, he's just at it all the time. And, the la and they've all come down with Shagger's back. Yeah. Uh, and I'm tipping that the, that the uh, blacked out face from the Sydney Morning Herald is Christopher Scase, who we all know has a bad case of Shagger's back and can't come back to Australia. Okay, so Christopher with Shagger's back. And Schlobberdan. Let's see who's right. Hello, it's oh, Schlobberdan! Yeah. Five yeah. It is Schlobberdan Milosevic. It's a government-sponsored assassination thing. A renegade British intelligence agent claims MI6 actually drew up plans to assassinate Milosevic in 1992. MI6 apparently came up with three scenarios. A bomb, an SAS group, or making it look like a car accident. They also considered sending him to a bonding session with the New South Wales State of Origin team. The spies even considered smuggling a mole into Schlobberdan's country house. Then, at a pre-arranged signal, the mole would launch an attack with the rat, the badger and the toad. <laughs> but an MI6 assassination of Milosevic wouldn't have brought peace to the Balkans. Look what happened when MI2 assassinated Archduke Franz Ferdinand. <laughs> Team Robbins, your usual suspects are... Pol Pot. Okay. Bob Pot. <laughs> and... Paul Keating. <laughs> Who's well, the next in line? Well, apparently the second two can catch minties in their mouth. <laughs> uh, look, this is, uh, this is nearly as we can tell, it's got something to do with... Um, with rudeness and arrogance. Rudeness but, and arrogance. Being rude. Paul was rude to a whole generation of Cambodians. <laughs> no, no, no. Very, very right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yes, abusive politicians. I yeah, say, abusive, I've, I've loved it since I've come out here, because in, in Canada we're, we're much more tame with things. And I yeah. come out here and there's nitwit losers and people sending faxes saying fart face. It's fabulous. I mean, I think it's good. Right it's on. sort of an open well, society. Well, I'm, 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 let's face it, what is the major role of government in Canada to keep the moose off the road? <laughs> It's about rudeness. Um, yes, um, rudeness and great facial expression. Uh, the thing I really like about the Bob Hawke ones, if you, if you pan down, you can see Blanche. <laughs> uh, Bob Hawke, of course, famous for calling that pensioner a silly old bugger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul Cuting, the get a job in, uh, incident. Get a job. Uh, last incident. Yeah, which, which, which brings us, to, uh, brings us to, to the charming a... Dr. Woolridge, who called yes. a, um, an older Australian who didn't want to be patronised in that way. Yes, called him a... a Puffed up little palm with a permed hairdo. <laughs> no, that's Bob Oh, that's right. Sorry. He called, Sorry. Him, he called him an effing nitwit. <laughs> Mickey Wolverich. And a swear word. I, I just find it absolutely astounding. Julie, What's happening to doctors in our society? Julie, Julie that, that's nothing. I was at home the other day and Wolverich phoned up. He said, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see if they're right. If it's uh, Mickey Wolverich. Ah, oh, there he is. <laughs> It is Federal Health and Aged Care Minister, Dr. Michael Wooldridge. 71-year-old Paul Harley Green called Michael disgusting after Wooldridge called him, don't beep this, don't beep this, a f***ing nitwit loser. <laughs> after Harley Green called him fart face after he <laughs> sent out letters addressed to Dear Older Australian. <laughs> it seems Paul Harley Green can dish it out, but he can't take it. Not unless someone else chops it up and mushes it for him. <laughs> Michael Wooldridge has now apologised for using the F word. He wishes he'd gone all the way and used the F and C combo. <laughs> to get his 40 cents worth out of the phone call. <laughs> but why shouldn't Dr Wooldridge abuse older Australians? He's got to have a hobby. After a long, hard day cutting health services, swearing at a pensioner is just the thing to help him unwind. <laughs> The good news is, government aged care correspondents will now offer a ticker box choice of titles, including A, Attention, Silly Old Bugger, <laughs> B, Dear Drain on the Health System, and C, Hey You with the Plastic Sheets and the Iron Lung. There's always D, Are You Still Here? <laughs> uh, that lot are now on 16 points, that lot 16 points! <laughs>
We call the next game Race Around the World. Players will be asked a series of questions relating to various hot news spots around the planet. Uh, don't forget to keep your answer short because you are playing against the clock. Julie, are you ready? <laughs> All right, I haven't travelled much. <laughs> In Canberra, what's happened to four of Australia's top young athletes? Drugs, 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 drugs. Because there was four of them. Tested positive. Anabolic Tested steroids, positive cycles. anabolic steroids. Cycles. Bicycles cycles. are involved. You Pushing like the pedals. You know. Thank you very much. He does have it right. Two points, Carl. In Dublin, the Anglican Church of Ireland has voted overwhelmingly to do what? I wish they were voting to say contraception should be available in Ireland. The Catholic Church is wrong, but I think it's to do with. <laughs> Written, spoken, and authorised by Julian across. <laughs> to come on this show more often. <laughs> I think they've uh, voted to exclude people who are members of extremist orange groups. The yep, orange, the orange groups. people. Yes. The orange people. <laughs> They're like yes. the village people, but in Ireland. <laughs> A lockout at Dumcree Church during marching season. Oh, so yeah. that's two points for us! <laughs> In San Francisco, lawyer Timothy Liebert is suing an upmarket housing development for what? I think they're saying that no lawyers are allowed to be in this block of flats because they found they caused trouble? <laughs> the, builder, the builder of the development won't allow lawyers into the property, so he's suing them. So another two points, that's three in a row! James Cocking! In Uganda, uh... the Guinness Book of Records is searching for what? Water, housing, streets that work? <laughs> Anyone who survived the Idi Amin regime? <laughs> it was going so well for <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Guinness Book of Records, what were they looking for? A long Guinness... piece of string. Very close, left? very close. Think about it before. Long as penis! <laughs> I don't know. It, it, Is it a long piece of hemp they're growing? No, no, it's, it's, it's a long different. It's, it's keep moving. Is it like it's a, a, a line of goats or a line, line of people? people? No, it's wool? A long people. Piece of You're wool? focusing on people. people and people um, want some, something about a person in the particular. Person, the tallest person in the world. Yes! The tallest person in the world would probably have the world's longest penis. <laughs> A girl. <laughs> John Paul Ofwono, the tall, world's tallest man, who stands mm -hmm. almost 2.5 metres apparently. And I don't know why they're searching for him, because you'd think he'd stick out. <laughs> In Sydney, tobacco companies Rothmans and WD and HO Wills announced what? I, I think they're going to merge. I don't know what for what purpose, but they're going to become one company. She's got a 10 points! <laughs> the world. Incredible! Absolutely astounding! Tobacco giants Rothmans and WD and HO Wills have announced plans to merge, creating Australia's biggest cigarette maker with projected sales of about $5 billion a year. The message on cigarette packs will now read, Warning, we've grown stronger, give in to your cravings and accept your destiny, resistance is useless. <laughs> Uh, both companies believe cigarettes have a potential for further growth, particularly in the throat and lungs. <laughs> the good news for the new tobacco giant is that cigarette consumption among young people is up, as chubby high school leg spinners take up the habit to avoid a slump in form. I'm sorry, he should not have been paid that money. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. $200,000. But what do you have to give it back? No, he doesn't. No, he's been given the money. He didn't make the date, and he's oh. been given the money. He oh. should give it to charity, if anything. Yeah, the... Yeah. 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 Actually, I believe he is he's, he's giving it to the leg spinners Ferrari owner's charity. <laughs> uh, the new company is also going to take on the government by introducing a colourful new cartoon character to get the kids started. Hock a lung up hound! <laughs> As a sign of good faith, the government may exempt cigarettes from the GST, so poor people will have something to do with their hands as they starve to death. <laughs> Ready to race around the world, Mikey? I'd rather have a smoke. Okay. <laughs> Your questions? Yeah. Uh, in Canberra, a group of ANU scientists using uranium series testing have discovered what? Was it, was it, was it, people have lived here a lot longer than they thought. It's my exactly question, it, thank you. But uh, he can answer probably, I mean, I'll have you answering, because... You've got a very strong, powerful voice. <laughs> <laughs> Big, soft hands. Guess what? I'm strong and powerful elsewhere. 
I should just leave you two. You know, there's some cold showers over there when you're finished. Oh, no. I'll be here. Well, okay. <laughs> Back to the question, uh, okay. human occupation of Australia might go back 100,000 years. More than they thought it was. Well, yeah, the Mungo Man, they tested him again, 20,000 yeah. years older. Uh, but he's, they still won't give him a licence. <laughs> In Singapore, a Qantas jet bound for Australia turned back to Changi Airport after 30 minutes because of what? Stinky poo. Stinky poo, foul odour in the cabin, he's got another two points, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> In Washington, about a hundred million new stamps featuring the Grand oh, Canyon had to be destroyed because of what? They had the wrong state on it. Yeah! <laughs> Another two points! <laughs> they had Colorado on them and not Arizona. In Sydney, businessman Alexander Preston has been given the go-ahead to do what? He's, he's the guy who's got a Sioux Crown Casino because they, he reckons that... Uh, he can count cards. He can count cards. Yeah, I'm, I'm you playing. know, I thought you could. <laughs> he's, he's so... Look at this. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. She's so mesmerising, isn't she? Uh, oh, let her have it. No, 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 you're so close. close but it's Star City Casino, not Crown Casino. Oh, right. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, I might have to give it to Joanna. <laughs> Uh, they, they, they let him gamble, um, even though uh, he, was, uh, he was a compulsive gambler. Uh, he would drink when he was gambling, and he would, to the point of vomiting, which is not nice when, like, you're playing 21. Blah, blah. <laughs> they encouraged his gambling to the point where he lost something like three million bucks. Oh, I think it was 30 million, wasn't it? And it's a great to think that the casino... Sorry, anybody uh, walking off the street and spend 30 million, three million bucks? Million. It was how much? Three, three million. million. Three million? Uh, Joanna has the right one there. Yes. Oh, yes. because Mikey did oh, say that. Damn. <laughs> okay, <laughs> last question now. Okay. In Victoria, Jeff Kennedy is getting a lot of flack over what? Oh, the uh, speed cameras. <laughs> yes, but uh, something else perhaps? He's, um, <laughs> he's, his exercise bike, which he has in his, uh, his office, which apparently was paid for by taxpayers. He's got them all and with uh, going to help uh, eight points. What second question relating to the bad smell on the plane? Evidently it was a piece of mining equipment and I just can't believe that if you were moving a piece of mining equipment in a plane across the world, you wouldn't wash it before you put it in the bag. Why would a piece of mining equipment smell like poo? <laughs> Depends on where it's been. <laughs> Miners get very lonely. <laughs> and explains the hat with the light too. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that's why you should never have sex with a miner. Jeff Kennett has a $1,600 tax payoff funded exercise bike in his home which he uses in his own time for the better delivery of good management for Victoria. <laughs> but he doesn't need to pay that much for a bike. Jeff could just send out the Victorian Education Department to confiscate one off a nine-year-old. <laughs> Uh, when it was pointed out the exercise bike was taxpayer funded, Kennett decided to attach a generator and sell the electricity to the private sector. <laughs> there are also plans to harness the power of the sun shining out of his ass. <laughs> if you're wondering how our other leaders stay fit, Kim Beasley walks from his house to his car every morning. <laughs> Alexander Downer runs around in circles trying to see what the back of his head looks like. <laughs> And John Howard prefers a rowing machine because you can put a lot of effort in and still be facing backwards. <laughs> they were on 26 points. Then 26 points. Final round coming out. <laughs> At the call of the night, the strange but true game. Julie, Adam, Joanna, your clues were. The betting guide, a way to make money in this country, or the share market. <laughs> the <laughs> underworld. Do you need any help? <laughs> Actually, Adam, I think that's an eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> it still is, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to show you a thing or two about Australian fashion. <laughs> Oh, was it your ass? <laughs> there you go.
pack of freaky transvestite Chippendales now, isn't it? I've been feeling a bit ill, Doctor. So, tell me, what makes you think you're right for the army? <laughs> Move on, there's nothing more to see here. Go back to your houses. So I think that's hey, the first time we've had a high court judge on the show. I'm going to stand for this. We hardly need but we do have another clue. Uh, yeah. Where does that do? Okay, well, in the event of, uh, of an accident and loss of power, well, standing up. Please, oh. please assume the brace position, and if all else fails, I'll be looking after myself, so good luck, everybody. <laughs> There was a bet on among flight attendants and pilots about whether the plane would land in Italy, I think. In Italy before, just before the estimated time of arrival, basically, the ETA. Um, <laughs> oh, I always thought it was peanut butter. <laughs> Evidently, a female flight attendant lost and... No, 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 she, she won. Oh, yeah, she did lose. So she, she lost yeah. the bet. The pilot was right. He, he, the pilot... Killed, killed everybody landing early so that she had to because he knew what the bet was yeah <laughs> she had to run up and down the aeroplane she had to, well, she had to, she had to, as soon as the plane landed she had to strip down to her underwear put a safety vest over walk down the steps with this, the captain's hat on walk around the plane once and come up and back up into the plane and the thing was all the passengers saw it and complained mm. I mean, what's the world coming to and finally, the Italians got to say, after being accused of being mad for years, these English, they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they have a right, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> Moments after landing in Italy, passengers on a British Airways flight were surprised to see a flight attendant running around the plane wearing nothing but the captain's hat, a fluorescent vest and her underwear. I've had that dream so many times. <laughs> Apparently, the spectacle caused a lot of male passengers to immediately return to the upright position. <laughs> Apparently, the streaker lost a bet the captain wouldn't be able to land the plane ahead of schedule. I'm just glad she didn't bet the captain he wouldn't land the plane handcuffed and blindfolded while whistling Ave Maria. Uh, Semi-naked romp caused chaos over the airport when several Italian pilots in a holding pattern tried to frantically roll down their cockpit windows <laughs> so they could wolf whistle. That's why it's called a holding pattern. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey Tara HG, you were given the battery. Yes. With the, the tooth. Yes. <laughs> and the buttocks. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and, of course, the battery that plays jingle bells. Yes. <laughs> Look, I went past the dentist the other day. I don't know whether you can work this into the, uh, into the routine, but... Uh, well, keep going, keep going, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. And there was something that the dentist was advertising, was he, he basically, I think, was advertising that he could drill your teeth with air. Uh, meaning you could, uh, some sort of air abrasion, I think was the name of the term. And I'm, I'm seeing this as teeth here. Oh, I'm just... The battery here providing the charge, yeah. and a set of buttocks there. <laughs> Point the stuff into it. But I reckon that could be Give me back future. my buttocks, <laughs> 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 So, I think it's exciting to several games. You can take these. Thanks, babe. Uh, so the buns of steel come into play about here and uh, obviously connected to the battery. Are we getting anywhere? No, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, keep working, keep working. That's right. uh, the, uh, the battery is in fact a, a metaphor. It's a, it's a me metaphor that plays jingle bells. <laughs> um, for battery as an assault and battery. It was the uh, Scottish story that uh, recently came out of the court. Uh, Chap took his poor young eight-year-old daughter to the dentist. She'd been up whinging and crying all night. Uh, the, you know, and, but then she wouldn't let the dentist pull her tooth. And he was uh, so exasperated, he actually... Well, there's a... Whip down the pants. Whip down the pants and, and smacked the... The bare buttocks. On the bare buttocks in the middle of the waiting room. Yes. So the, uh, the, the, the chap was charged with assault. Um, yes. it's, a, it's a fine line between disciplining a child, which is, I suppose, every parent's decision, and probably, you know, Pulling her pants off and slapping her in public, which is probably a tad humiliating. Oh, it's of course, you're a, you're a first grade football player, which is. <laughs> Thank you, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Second story. A Scottish teacher has been convicted of assault after spanking his eight year old daughter half a dozen times in public because she didn't want to have a tooth extracted at the dentist. The man said he was only going to spank his daughter once, but she already had the gas and kept giggling at him. <laughs> I must vote no on the GST. <laughs> uh, funnily enough, the little girl didn't mind, 
At home, she gets spanked with a rolled up newspaper, but at least at the dentist, she had a choice of Vogue, Women's Weekly, and a rare National Geographic from 1973. <laughs> Uh, in a bid to curb the problem, the Scottish Government will now set up legalised spanking rooms where concerned parents can give their kids a damn good thrashing without fear of being arrested. Uh, in news just a hand, a modern version of the Bible has been published in the hopes of attracting younger readers. Moses has become MC Tablets, Adam and Eve are now Brad and Jennifer, and Noah is known simply as Ark Dude. <laughs> Uh, on this street, Julia Crossan, Adam Hills and Joanna Grieg scored a minty, fresh 31 points! <laughs> and thrilling Mikey Robbins, Tara Muscle, H.G. Nelson on a wider than white, 30 points! <laughs> One point, ain't it? <laughs> Had to give it for Adam's very fine rubber bum yeah. wood. So we say separated the two teams, the bum work. The bum, sorry, yeah, the he bum did work. well. He did, he did what he's stylish, he did the strut. But it was our bum, yeah, It was your bum. <laughs> but he used your bum better than you ever did. <laughs> what? It was your bum, but I made it my own. <laughs> I was more than willing to pull a bum out of the fire if you needed it. Uh, so we say sick temper Tyrannus and leave you with the good news that the Democrats are holding firm in their discussions with John Howard about exempting basic foodstuffs from the GST. Like fat. <laughs> like fat. <laughs> the government doesn't mind this because basic foodstuffs for the Democrats are fruit, nuts, roughage and fairy bread. Well, <laughs> you are what you eat. <laughs> good night.